Hey everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this NVIDIA powered graphics card from Galaxy. This is the GeForce GTX 780 Ti. This is a reference card from Galaxy, so it's of course going to feature the GeForce GTX 780 Ti GPU at its heart, which is designed by NVIDIA, and then uh, Galaxy has also gone with the NVIDIA reference design for the card itself. Uh, for memory frame buffer, you get 3 gigabytes of uh, GDDR5 memory that's running along at 7000 megahertz, uh, and I'm going to be giving comparisons between the 780 Ti and the Titan the whole time we're going along here. So. 7,000 megahertz compared to the Titan's 6,008, so faster memory. Uh, you also have 3 plus 1 display gaming, so that means that you can uh, natively connect up to 3 monitors in surround for uh, 3D gaming. You can also add a fourth display, which you can use as a companion display, just not for 3D gaming as well, so you can use it for web browsing or uh, chat or that sort of thing. Uh, you get GPU Boost 2.0, um, which was introduced with the 600 uh, and 700 series, which basically uh, allows you for uh, various configurations for overclocking, but you can base it on a power target, you can base it on a temperature target, and it's a lot of fun to play around with, and there's various uh, bits of software you can actually use to manage that. Uh, that's the memory again. TXAA, Physics, DirectX 11, and SLI support are all included. You can do up to four-way SLI with the 780 Ti, uh, I, I, I believe. I know you can do at least three-way. Um, the 780 stops at three-way. 780 Ti, you should be able to do four-way. We'll test that out eventually here. Uh, looking at the back, you can see some information about Galaxy and why you should purchase a Galaxy card. Galaxy is, of course, supporting this card, so they are going to be uh, handling the uh, manufacturer's warranty, for example, so any support uh, provided by the car for the card will be uh, provided through Galaxy. Uh, and then over on the right side here, Galaxy also has uh, their own software. It's called Galaxy Extreme Tuner Plus. Uh, so you can download that to um, adjust G uh, the GPU boost to 2.0 settings, for example, as well as monitoring and uh, taking control of the video card. And before I go over accessories, here's a look at the side of the box where you can see some more of the detailed specs and a list of uh, the different compatibilities and features. Um, one thing specifically I wanted to point out was that you need a minimum 600 watt or greater power supply with a minimum 12 volt current rating of 42 amps. Um, so just bear that in mind. And there's all the rest of the specs and compatibilities. You, of course, do get uh, NVIDIA Shield support as well as G-Sync support. So um, any 600 series card, uh, actually 650 Ti or greater, will support NVIDIA's G-Sync technology, which is super sweet and we'll be seeing a lot more of coming in 2014. Uh, but moving on from there, we have, of course, the card itself uh, in the retail box. Uh, from Galaxy, you have an attention customer. Just letting you know how to contact Galaxy if you do need some technical support. Again, Galaxy is providing all of the post-purchase support and whatnot for this card. Then you also get this little pouch, which has some additional accessories in it, such as a DVI to VGA adapter, which you... Uh, if you have a 780 Ti, who knows? Maybe somebody has a 780 Ti and an analog monitor, but if you don't, if you are, maybe upgrade. That's a time to upgrade if you have a 780 Ti. Okay, uh, here's a couple of power adapters, just a couple of Molex plugs, two PCI Express graphics connectors, PEG, sometimes better known as, and these look like they're both, actually no, one is uh, double Molex to six pin, and one is double Molex to eight pin, since those are the two power connectors on the card itself. Makes perfect sense. Lastly, you get a GeForce GTX series user's manual from Galaxy as well, with a table of contents as well as system requirements, all that good stuff, sort of a walkthrough of installation. Also tucked away in here, oh, a couple things. This is a Galaxy pamphlet with, I'm guessing, more information on Galaxy products. Or maybe it's a sweet poster. No, more, it's an easy setup guide. I was wrong on both counts. Easy visual setup guide for connecting everything. You can also reference our How to Build a Computer video on Newegg TV, which also gives some instructions for that. And finally, you get your Galaxy uh, driver disk, which is probably outdated by the time you get it, so don't use this driver. Go to the NVIDIA website and download the latest driver from there. And now on to the video card itself. I'm going to start by ceremoniously removing the clear plastic, which is protecting the polycarbonate window. So um, if you've been following the 700 series of graphics cards, or if you've been um, watching as NVIDIA has released the Titan, for example, you might notice some eerie similarities between this card and uh, some of its brethren, such as the 780 and the Titan. Some slight uh, vi visual changes that they've made, though, is that they've uh, put a bit of dark printing on the GTX 780 Ti logo, which makes it stand out a bit more. And they've also done some uh, powder coating on the aluminum fins underneath there where the cooling array is. Um, so that also gives it uh, sort of a, a darker look, which I think uh, looks pretty cool. Uh, speaking of the cooling configuration, as well as the uh, cooling situation in general, 
Uh, they're sticking with this beastly looking uh, reference design shroud from NVIDIA. So it features a perfectly balanced blower style fan down on this end. It's going to push your air across this fin array and it's going to eject uh, most of the air out the back of your case via the ventilation there at the back, um, which is a, a very good way of doing things. And it's also a design that NVIDIA has stuck with because uh, this is a more, this is a design that is going to um, fit more aptly into small form factor chassis, for example, where you don't have as much airflow available. So you can still use this card in that type of configuration, um, but still not be affecting the uh, internal temperature for the rest of your components, which is pretty cool. Um, that's not to say that this is designed specifically for small form factor chassis. Of course, you're going to see lots of uh, high-end, top-of-the-line gaming systems using this card. Uh, speaking of which, I did confirm the uh, SLI compatibility, um, since I was not 100% sure about that, since NVIDIA kind of threw me a a curveball when the 780 didn't do four-way uh, SLI anymore, but uh, this one does do four-way SLI, so um, you can get four of them if you have deep pockets. Uh, there's your SLI fingers, which are right up there at the top. Uh, here's also a look at the back of the PCB, which you can see is a very nice uh, sort of semi-glossy black color, um, which I always appreciate. I like when uh, they give a bit of attention of, to detail to the PCB itself because it's often a very visible element of the graphics card when it's installed in your case. And then here at the center you can see the uh, GPU, or at least uh, the back of the PCB where the GPU is located. That is the GK110, which was originally introduced uh, as in, in gaming trim uh, with the GeForce GTX Titan, uh, followed up with the GTX 780, and now of course the 780 Ti, which is really full GK110. Uh, they've gone uh, pretty much all out with this particular one. It has every single SMX unit enabled. That gives it a total of 15 as compared to the Titan, which has 14. Uh, there's 192 CUDA cores per SMX unit, so that gives you a total uh, of 2,880 CUDA cores um, in this particular graphics card. Um, that's single precision. You also get 960 double precision CUDA cores. Um, if you're comparing to the Titan again, uh, 2,880 for this card, the Titan has 2,688. Uh, you get 240 texture units. Um, you get 48 ROP units, uh, and then this is going to be running along at a base clock of 875 megahertz. And then of course with GPU Boost 2.0, it will go up to 928 megahertz. And I can verify that this will even go beyond that, though your mileage may vary. It kind of depends from card to card, as well as the temperature set, uh, that, that the card is achieving in your case, depending on your cooling solution, as well as any tweaks and tuning you might have done. Uh, using the software to uh, mess around with GPU Boost 2.0 because it's really uh, pretty simple to do some overclocking with. Uh, the boost clock again, 928 compared to the Titans, which was 876. Uh, and then the memory again at 7,000 megahertz on this one. Uh, you get total video of memory of 3,072 megabytes, GDDR5. And that is one place where the Titan does have the leg up on this card is going to be video memory because the Titan has 6 gigabytes or pr pretty much twice as much. Um, but that's a very, very desirable for people who are using the Titan for GPU compute type stuff. Um, down here at this end you can see a bit more ventilation uh, and uh, this in my experience has been acting a little bit more as an intake than as an exhaust but uh, you can see they've continued the fin array uh, over on that side. Around on this side you can see the power requirements so uh, again a 6 pin and an 8 pin uh, PCI Express graphics connector and they are recommending a 600 watt power supply for this graphics card. It has a TDP or thermal design power of 250 watts. Uh, and then this is going to be running along typically at a temperature of 82. Uh, at least that will be the temperature target that's uh, set by default in GPU Boost 2.0. It does have a thermal threshold of up to 95. Although in my experience with testing um, with the 780 Ti so far, even if you give it a temperature target that's much higher, um, like I was trying to push it to 87 and 88, um, even when you do that, it's still very difficult to um, actually push the card beyond 84 or 85 was the most I saw in any of my testing. So again, that's a, a by design. Um, so that's really what the card is designed to uh, run at that temperature. And it will usually push itself in order to achieve that temperature or as close to it as you can get. Uh, I think I already mentioned, but polycarbonate window right there over the, uh, over the black uh, aluminum fin array. Uh, and then this is, of course, still based on the Kepler manufacturing process, which is uh, 28 nanometer. And um, I believe I already mentioned this, but you have a texture fil filtering rate of 210 gigatexels per second. Uh, and then you get a total of 7.1 billion transistors on that GK110 GPU. And it is substantially larger, for instance, than the GK104 that you might find in the GTX 680 or the GTX 760. Um, also for compatibility, I know I already mentioned this a little bit when we were talk about the, talking about it on the box, but 
There's really a pretty impressive suite of uh, NVIDIA features. TXAA and FXAA, of course, are anti-aliasing techniques, which can give you more eye candy without uh, putting quite as much strain on the GPU itself. Uh, GeForce Experience is a software uh, companion that will run in your system tray. You can use it to optimize uh, your uh, gaming, your gaming settings uh, so you can really get the most out of your GPU uh, and that's a pretty effective way that they've gone about doing that. Uh, you of course get PCI Express Gen 3 compatibility, there's the connector down there at the bottom, although it will run just fine on a PCI, Ex PCI Express Gen 2 bus, uh, Gen 3 will give you the maximum performance that's available. Uh, and then you also get Shadow Play as part of GeForce Experience, which has been fully enabled now. Uh, this actually has an H.264 encoder that is uh, integrated as part of the GPU. It does that on the fly. So that's uh, how it enables stuff like streaming directly to a shield unit, which this is also, of course, capable of. But also Shadow Play, um, which is a method of, um, tr of uh, actually recording your gameplay footage. And it will sort of keep a log of that so you can hit a button to automatically capture the, the last 20 or 30 seconds of gameplay. Uh, or you can use it to just uh, capture gameplay on the fly as you go. Pretty, works pretty uh, nicely as, uh, as we've seen in a lot of the reviews so far. Uh, I mentioned Shield Ready, of course, and then also G-Sync Ready, um, because G-Sync is NVIDIA's newest technology we're, we're going to be seeing in 2014, which pretty, pretty much eliminates the uh, stuttering or tearing that can be the uh, results of V-Sync and uh, allows the card and the monitor to talk together to give you the maximum frame rate from both the card, uh, also mirrored on the monitor's refresh rate, um, so it will just give you, from what I understand, is the most buttery, smooth, smooth gameplay experience that you could possibly get, although I have not had the opportunity to try out G-Sync personally yet. I'm sure I will soon, or at least I hope I will soon, because I've heard many good things about it. Uh, one last thing is fan normalization. That's uh, one thing they've done with the fan profile on this card. Uh, make sure that it doesn't ramp up or down uh, too quickly, and that will, again, just uh, reduce the amount of noise it will produce to give you a better gaming experience. Finally, here on the back, you've got your video outs. So uh, first off, full-size display port and full-size HDMI. You also get a couple dual-link DVI connectors. Bear in mind that the top one here is digital only. The bottom one is digital and analog. So if you are going to use that DVI to VGA adapter, go with the bottom plug right here. And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, we've been taking a closer look at the Galaxy GeForce GTX 780 Ti, featuring, of course, the 780 Ti GPU from NVIDIA, as well as packaging and support from Galaxy. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful or entertaining or any of those things, go ahead and maybe click the like button down there in the like area. Maybe leave me a comment down in the comment section down below and let me know what you think of the 780 Ti and whether or not you think it's the fastest GPU that's currently out there. It is, at least as of the filming of this video, but you can argue all you want in the comment section. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.